Okay, the trading day is alive and well. Markets still digesting a lot of news this week. Obviously, the debt ceiling story uh, in Washington, the AI boom, and uh, here in Canada, a lot of bank earnings, most of which left investors feeling fairly cautious. Let's bring in Tiffany Woodfield, Portfolio Manager at Raymond James, to talk about the mood of the markets. Tiffany, it's nice to see you. Uh, why don't we start with the banks? Because they are looking ahead. They're trying to determine the economic road from here. Uh, and they, they painted a pretty cautious picture. What was your take on some of those results this week? Well, it's, it's interesting, and I always find first, just to start out there, we look at the banking industry in general, and although the Canadian banking industry is very different to the U.S., we still have that overlay, and so when people are looking at this, they're nervous in general for the banking industry. So the reason that they're different first, just as far as uh, landscape, is that in Canada, we're heavily regulated, okay, so the regulations are just so much stricter. And we only have the major banks that are allowed to be players within that. So we've got the six banks. So whereas in the U.S. and you hear of the bank failures, that's because there's so many different mid-sized and smaller banks. Okay, so that's just the landscape when everybody's looking at it. Now, when we specifically look at Canada, what's making them go, okay, why are earnings lower is because of a couple factors. So first, everybody's sentiment on the banking industry because of what happens in the U.S. still filters to here. Secondary, when you look at um, any of the increased potential with the interest, interest rates increasing, they've got increased costs. And now the major thing that they've done is put aside more money just in case people can't pay their loans. So they're making those loan provisions. Now, this is similar to what they did at the beginning of COVID, if you think of that as well. They set aside a large amount of money just in case people couldn't pay any of their debts back to the bank. So in Canada, I always remind people that we're very conservative. The banks are very conservative. And so this to me makes it sound like, well, they're being proactive rather than reactive. So I actually think it's a good move. And does it say that the economy, they're a little bit worried about what's happening in the uncertainty? Yes, it's a little bit unpredictable. So against that backdrop, um, it's kind of a two-part question here. A, would you, would you consider investing in the banks right now? And B, what do you make of the fact that, you know, I mentioned the TSX right now is uh, on pace for its worth, worst month of performance so far this year because yeah. banks have lagged, because energy has lagged. We keep talking about all this tech excitement. Tech stocks are up in Canada, but they make up a smaller piece of the pie. So there's yeah. been this momentum for tech. So the S&P has been outperforming the TSX. So it's almost a two-parter. What do you think about investing in banks at this point? And what do you make of this outperformance by the U.S. versus Canada? Okay, it's a good question. So here what we're looking at, if you're looking at a balanced portfolio, I still think you want to have some tech. And so you're in the S&P 500 and you're still investing in the U.S. and having some of those holdings. Now, as far as in Canada, as you know, we're heavily weighted into banks. Okay, so when you look at the TSX. Now, what I look at for the banks right now is they're undervalued. So you look at their earnings are down. They're still profitable. And you look at are they good quality companies for the long term? Secondary to that, a lot of the banks have increased their dividend. So then that still shows that they're still able to pay out to their shareholders. So if you're looking at the Canadian banks and going, okay, great, I can earn, say, a 5% dividend, and even if their um, capital appreciation isn't there right now, if at least I'm getting a dividend, then that's a good part of your portfolio, particularly if you're living in Canada, because those dividends, like I said, are treated tax favorably. So better than if you were just earning interest um, from your money. So that's how I would kind of balance it is having some of the Canadian banks, the larger banks, I think they're a safe play and then still opening yourself up to some of the growth opportunities with the S&P 500. And before I let you go, we've only got about a minute left, uh, Tiffany, but uh, you, you brought some interesting ideas to the table. So for those who think maybe cash or, or short-term securities is king right now, you're saying, yes, give it, a, give it a shot. But you're also, in Canada, looking at a name like Alimentation Couchetard, convenience store operator, pretty steady eddy operator, and then uh, T-Mobile which uh, is a very well-loved stock in the United States. Is there, is there a way to tie together all these themes briefly? Again, exactly what I was just saying, just tying it together is having balance, okay? Keeping a little bit of cash, okay? So you can earn great money on cash and just have it a high interest savings account if you're just needing to have some of that cash, okay? And you can get that insured through the different banks. Then as well, you can go, okay, great, I've got a steady eddy, like with the Couchetard. 
And then you go, okay, T-Mobile, they've had great earnings last year or great growth. They had uh, 19%, no, 21% last year. So then you're diversified. 